For this video, I'll be walking you through implementing a balanced binary tree, an AVL tree, breaking down all the algorithms and strategy with examples on how you can use this to perform various things like improving your search speed, for example. Let's get to it. We have here a binary tree I showed you how to implement on the previous video of the series. And since the, an AVL tree is also a binary tree, I'll be extending this and override a couple methods only. I'll first create an AVR class extending binary search tree. I will set its root and compare properties. And this is because JavaScript does not have an easy way to implement protected members. So I need to copy the binary tree constructor here, but I'll need to call super. So I'll change this compare property to an FN variable because you cannot access the this keyword before you call super. Then I'll call super with this FN and set my private compare function. Now that we got the setup out of the way, there is something you must understand first, which is the height of a node. What it means to say a node has a height of two or four, for example. When we start, the tree is empty, root is null, and we say the root height is zero. So a null node is zero. Some other implementation will consider null nodes as negative one. To determine the height of a node, we need to know the height of both of those children. Then we use the higher one and add one to it. So when we set root, it gets height of one because both of his children are null and a parent node is one higher than its higher child node. If root has only left or right node, or even both of them, we say the root has height of two and so forth. If we code a method that returns a node height, we first check the node is null and return zero. Otherwise we return the max height of both of its children plus one. Another thing you need to understand first is the balance factor, which will tell us how unbalanced or balanced a node is. And we get this by subtracting left node height from the right node height. If left node height is one and right node is zero, one minus zero is one. So one means that node left side is slightly unbalanced. If we had the inverse, zero minus one is negative one. So we say the right side is slightly unbalanced. In case left node height is two and right node height is zero, we would get two from two minus zero. And in this case, we say node is unbalanced on the left and negative two means node is unbalanced on the right. If node is balanced, we would get zero. And these are the balance factor values we care about. Negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. This is because an AVL three sides height differ mostly by one. So when we get two and negative two, we need to do something about it. I create a method that returns the node balance factor and all it does is return the result of left node height minus the right node height. Then I'll create a private balance frozen object so the object and these values cannot be changed and it will contain our values and their labels. Before we proceed, I will copy the print method over so I can change a couple of things. I will make it print the height and balance factor of the node as well so we can visually see when a node needs to be balanced. Now, if I create my tree instance and call print, we see null root of zero height and zero balance factor. And we'll first copy the insert method from parent class and do a temporary change. So we have something that works for now. When I add seven, we see that it has height of one and zero factor, which means it's balanced. I'll add 50 and then 40, which should all go to the left side. And we see that it is three high and left unbalanced. I'll add 80 and 85, which should go to the right and it becomes balanced now. Then I'll add 90 and 95, which should also go to the right. And we see balance factor of negative two, which means it is right heavy. So let's do some balancing so it goes back to normal. I'll first undo the insert and copy the insert node method over. When I call insert node, I need to reassign the result to the root because as we shift things, the root may change. So we need to reassign root on insert. I will also refactor this insert node method so it actually returns something and we will come back to it in a little.
But let me break down to you how we will balance these trees. What we will be doing is called rotations. And there are different types of rotations depending on the balance factor of the node. Let's look at this tree, which is left heavy. In order to make this balance again, we need to rotate the root node to the right of its left node like this. So this left node becomes the root and the root becomes the right node. This is why we reassign root on insert. We do this by detaching the left node, move its right node to become the root new left node, and then make the root the detached left node right node, and then set the left node as the new root. We also may have a similar situation, but on the right. In that case, we do a left rotation, which puts the current node on the left side of the right node, therefore balancing the tree again. Let's first implement this, and then we look into other types of rotations. I create my right rotation and I detach left node and then set node left to be the detached node right. Then I append node to detach right and return detached node to be set as the new root. I'll copy this and make left rotation method and I'll just swap left and right references. Now I'll create a balance method that takes a node and an optional key representing the key of a node either inserted or removed and I'll return null if you know this null first thing. And I'll get this balance factor and proceed to check if it is left or right heavy, and in case it is left heavy, I check if the key is there and compare with the left node key, checking if it's smaller. And if it is smaller, it is because it was added to the left side of the node making it left heavy. So I'll do a right rotation, otherwise I'll return the node for now. I'll copy this for the right heavy check, just swapping references and make it left rotation instead. But for this, I must check if the node is greater or equal, not just greater. Very important detail not to miss. Now let's test this and I'll be creating situation that require left and right rotations. And for the right rotation, I'll be adding values smaller and smaller to make it left heavy. So 70, 60 and 50. Notice that 70 balance factor is 2 now, and it is the root. So I'll then, from the inside of insert node method, I'll call the balance node passing current node and new node key. And we can see the tree is now different with 60 as the root and balance factor of 0 with 70 on the right. For the left rotation, I'll add larger and larger number, 7, 80, 90 will do, and we will see that 70 gets left rotated, making 80 the root. Perfect. It works. Now let's implement auto rotation to this. The auto rotations are left, right, and right, left rotations. I show you this left heavy tree, and we need to do a right rotation. But a node can be left heavy like this as well. Which to balance it, I need to do a left rotation on the left node, then a right rotation on the root node. And that's where the left, right rotation comes from. And similarly, on the other side, you do a right rotation on the right node and a left on the root. Let's implement this. So I'll create the left-right rotation first, and we do a left rotation on the left node, and then return a right rotation on the node. And I'll also copy this to create a right-left rotation. And in the balance node here, instead of returning the node, we return the node, we will return a left-right rotation and a right-left rotation on the bottom as well. So to better explain this, remember we call balance node inside insert node and it will be called after the insertion happened. If the insertion made the node left heavy, it check if the key was inserted on the left and do a right rotation. And if it inserted on the right, it does a left right rotation, making the node balanced before it returns it. For when we are inserted, we only care if the node is unbalanced left or right, not if it's slightly unbalanced left or right. And this goes back to AVL definition that says one side is higher than the other at most by one. So slightly unbalanced is okay to go on insertion. Now let's create a situation that will require left and right and right left rotation. And for the right left rotation inserting 70, 80 and 75 will do. And we see 75 as the root. And I know it works because it picked the mid number to be the root instead. And on when we do a right rotation, it picks also the mid number, but the mid number there is the second inserted. Same thing if we try the other example as well. The final thing I will be overriding for this tree is the remove method. So I'll first copy these remove methods from the BSD class and bring it over. And all we're gonna do is call balance node on few places. 
first to the final node return here and we call balance node with node and key where key is the key of the node removed also for this item node return we will only call them with the node because at this point we haven't removed node yet so we should only care if the tree is slightly unbalanced and i'll explain more in a little now in the balance node method we will handle the case where key is not provided so we can handle slightly unbalanced tree on removal so for this one we check the left node and then we get the balance factor of the left node and then we check if it is balanced or semi unbalanced on the left and we do a right rotation And finally, we check if it is semi unbalanced on the right and do a left right rotation. I'll copy this for the other side as well and just swap the left and right references. And I just realized I may not need the is balance check here, so let's test this now. I already have in place the situations which I want to remove the nodes. For the first, I have a tree that is slightly left heavy. So if I remove 70 here, it should do a right rotation since removed 70 would make the node left heavy. I added some logs so we can see which rotation happened. And that's why you see here above the second letter R for the right rotation on removal. And then a similar situation on the opposite side, we should do a left rotation. And we see it did a left on insertion and then a left on removal. The third situation, which it did a right-left rotation on insertion, but once I remove 70, it does a right-left rotation again. Finally, a case, it does a left-right rotation on insertion, and once I remove 70, it does a left-right again. So with that, let me tell you that the AVL tree is not very efficient tree for cases where you are doing constant insert and removal of nodes. It is better for search. If you are going to use it for cases where you do constant insert and removal of nodes, there is another way to balance a tree and is the red black tree, which is much better for that type of situation. And this is because as you could see, we do a lot of things on insert and removal of nodes and that can slow you down a little. Check the code in the description and play with this. And don't forget to shoot questions in the comments. Once again, thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.